Okay, so the first step in uh, getting our new Wilwood brakes uh, put on the car is we need to assemble the rotors uh, to the rotor hat. So basically we just take one of uh, these nuts, put a washer on it, grab some of our Loctite uh, 271 red here, and then in an alternating pattern, which I assume is a crisscross to make sure it lays flat <coughs> and tightens flat onto the, onto the hat here, uh, we'll go ahead and start uh, just hand tightening these up. And then we'll come back across in the same crisscross pattern uh, with the torque wrench at 155 inch pounds. So we'll go ahead and start here. successfully torqued out all the uh, all the bolts here it's time to start safety wiring so pick a snow day like I did <laughs> it's pretty nasty outside we have snow apocalypse out here uh, and be prepared to spend uh, an hour or so probably more uh, getting into this all right let's do it
brakes are here. Uh, they come pretty well packaged. I've already taken the uh, the rotors and heads out of here and assembled those. Uh, but we've got our calipers in each one of these boxes. We've got our mounting brackets here. We've got a box of, uh, of uh, brake pads uh, to slap on here. And back over there is the uh, hardware. So I'm gonna grab that and uh, uh, yeah, we'll get started with this install. Another thing about what comes in the box is they give you a pretty nice sheet of stickers, which I always appreciate. Put some additional information on the back, but uh, that's a good set of stickers. Uh, all you other manufacturers out there, take note. This is uh, what I consider to be the perfect allocation of stickers in a package of this size and expense. Uh, here's our, our bolts for mounting on the brackets, along with the shims and washers. Uh, yeah, we're just about ready to go now that we got the uh, rotors and hats assembled. It is time to start placing things on the car. Okay, so as you saw earlier, we got the uh, <coughs> hats and rotors put together. So now it's time to uh, start getting into the actual uh, installation of these brakes. Um, I did get a kick out of this. If you take a look here, <coughs> there is a big, uh, big disclaimer there. It says these brakes should only be installed by someone experienced in competent installation and maintenance of disc brakes. Plus a huge paragraph here that if you sum it up basically says, if you screw this up and die, uh, don't come crawling back to us whining. Uh, so <clears throat> with these uh, warnings in mind, I'm, I'm definitely gonna die. So next of kin, please uh, please don't come after Will Wood if anything happens. <clears throat> but I did get a kick out of that. Um, so next up, if we look at the instructions here, we gotta put this bracket on with the shims. And then we got to load up the load up the brake pads and uh, put the calipers on, also with the shims. And then have a look for alignment, uh, making sure it's all centered up in the uh, in the caliper. Uh, you know the rotor spins without uh, dragging on the uh, on the brake pads. And basically that's it. Once we uh, get that on there, we can start. Uh, uh, after we do the test fit, we can go ahead and uh, get things situated with the uh, final installation of the brakes. So uh, we'll go ahead and, and uh, get started on that now. Okay, so here we are on the uh, <coughs> passenger side uh, front wheel hub. As you can see, I've cleaned this up a little bit. It was pretty nasty before. Just used some soapy water and uh, let it drain off into this cesspool at the bottom here. Uh, Everything looks pretty good. This this wheel hub looks non-stock and new. It definitely looks different from the other one and I noticed that it said precision on it over here. I'm pretty sure this wheel hub got replaced at some point in his life, which is an interesting uh, uh, data point for this car. But uh, uh, yeah, this looks pretty good. Uh, when I try to clean this up with a bit of a brass brush, just make sure it's uh, the rotor's gonna sit flat against it. And what they want us to do is go ahead and mount these brackets and they want us to start with a uh, with this 21 millimeter head uh, bolt with the washer on it and then add two shims uh, right here um, before adding the bolt on uh, just uh, for the test fit. So uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and get started with that now. Get these shims on. Okay, let's try bolt number two here. Oh, that was some gunk in there I didn't get out.
Let's tighten those up. tight nice and snug there and it's important that uh, this bracket sits firm up against the upright so we're going to go ahead and look here for uh, any uh, craziness with how this sits on here and I think it looks pretty good okay all right next up is uh, going ahead and getting this rotor on these rotors are directional Tire peak here, you can see the arrow. That's the way you want the wheels to go. So we'll go ahead and get that on here. Let's see. Yes. Okay. Now we're going to take a couple of our lug nuts and secure this rotor to the hub. And hopefully these are long enough to get out of here. Yep. Okay. Go ahead and get this nice and flat. Get these hand tight. Okay. We'll put a third one on here for fun. Okay, rotor is on, feels good. Okay, now we gotta start working on the calipers. All right, these calipers are enormous. They are uh, three pistons per side instead of the, uh, the two that you'll find on the stock. Uh, C5 Z06, but uh, these are these are big boys. They look great, uh, and they should give us a, a lot more uh, braking power than the previous guys. Looks like there's another warning attached to this here that tells me that certain death is imminent if I do this myself. what it says okay all right so I'm gonna assemble these calipers looks like this is the correct side got the bleeder on top go on here like this so uh, give me a couple minutes and oh I take that back look there's bleeders on both sides so maybe these are not uh, uh, specific per side so I was led to believe um, okay I'm gonna go ahead and get some uh, uh, Get the brake pads in here get these uh these pins out these you don't know if you can see that but these little uh spring little clips in here um not the best way to do that i don't think but there it is uh we're gonna go ahead and get those out get the brake pads in get these uh these pieces back we're gonna oil them up with some three and one oil just a little bit uh get them nice and, and smooth to get them sliding in and out of here and uh then we'll put these guys on here and uh, see how the fit goes all right we'll be right back Okay, we're back. Uh, went ahead and reread the directions, and uh, <clears throat> looks like yeah, these are going to be directionally mounted. They want the largest piston, which is this guy, to be on the uh, ex the rotor exit of uh, of the caliper. So this uh, largest piston needs to be on top. Uh, the other, I looked at the other one, and it's down here on this, so obviously goes to the other side. Uh, they don't want you to load the uh, 
Uh, brake pads first. What they want you to do is adjust each thing incrementally, which makes sense. Um, so what they want you to do is lube up these guys here, uh, throw a couple shims on each one, and then load this guy on here, and make sure that the rotor is centered, uh, centered inside of the caliper here, looking through the top window. So that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put a little bit of oil on uh, each one of these guys. Just a tad. Okay, and we've got to get our shims out here. And keep in mind there are two sets of shims with this. There's the, uh, uh, the shims that you get for the big bolts in the back, which are thicker than the shims that uh, go to uh, these bracket or these uh, caliper mounting studs. So just keep that in mind so you don't put the wrong brackets or the wrong uh, spacers in the wrong place. Shims here, two per. Looks like they give you a whole bunch more than what you need, or maybe you will need them for fine tune adjustments. We'll have to see. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put our two on here and our two on here. All right, and let's mount our caliper here. Maybe. There we go. Okay. Now we're on there. And I think they want you to temporarily tighten up those lock nuts. Yes with the washers, so let's do that. Get these washers on here. Okay, let me go get the right socket for this, and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Uh, it's a 7 16 and keep in mind that this is a 12-point. These are going to be 12-point nuts. Uh, the bolts that go into the, uh, uh, from the rotor hat uh, into the rotor are also 12 points. So keep that in mind uh, when you put this together. You are going to have to have the requisite uh, uh, 12 points in here. And it looks like I have gotten the wrong socket yet again. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'll be right back. Let me grab the uh, correct socket. Alright. Correction, it is going to be a one half inch uh, socket, 12 point. Get this thing out of here. Let's go ahead and let's tighten it up.
that sucked up. Snug and snug. All right, that's on there. So let's take a look at our alignment here. We need this kind of this rotor centered in the top window. And judging from that line coming down, that looks pretty well centered to me. So I think we're going to be okay with the shibs on the uh, uh, on the uh, uh, caliper mount bolts. Uh, those are going to be good. Uh, so now what we have to do is, as you know, is we put shims uh, up here on there as well. And we're going to need to put the brake pads in and make sure they are aligned uh, with the rotor as well. And then uh, make adjustments from there. So I'm going to go ahead and take this caliper back off. And then I'll load up the brake pads. And uh, uh, we will test fit that as well. Um, you know, come to think of it, what I'm going to do is, uh, what it actually says in the instructions, is go ahead and get your... Uh, caliper mounting bolts uh, in here permanently. Uh, so what we're gonna do is put a little bit more of that 271 Loctite and torque this down to, I believe, 77 foot-pads. Uh, we'll confirm that when we get back and uh, go ahead and do that and we'll be back. So we got the, uh, the caliper ready here. Uh, we got these uh, pins out. There are these little tiny little spring clips inside of each here to get these pins out. Um, then once you uh, get those out, you can load these brake pads in pretty easily. Uh, slide the pins back in, put this, uh, these spring-loaded clips back in, and you're pretty much good to go. The, uh, the really cool thing was I was looking at those pins in there, and I was thinking to myself that these would be super easy to lose taking these out with uh, a pair of needle-nose pliers, <laughs> and you'd probably never find them again. Uh, very happy to see that Will Wood uh, supplies you with an extra set. Looks like there's about four of them in there. That's fantastic. Uh, because I would imagine it's very likely you may lose one of these at some point. So uh, it's very nice of them to, to put that uh, that extra in there because you're gonna need it. I'm not in love with that design, uh, but it seems to work okay. Uh, but very nice uh, of them to include those extra pads, uh, springs. So uh, we have our brake pads in. You can see these are gigantic, nice, thick, meaty pads. Uh, we're going to go ahead and test fit this on here, and what we're looking for is uh, the pad material being flush with the outside edge of the rotor. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and try and mount this up. Put the pads on. Maybe. Oh, I'll see if I get my finger out of it. There we go. Okay. Man, that. <coughs> it's pretty good. Got a little just minuscule rub there. That is going to be fine. <coughs> but what we're really looking for here is being flush with the outside of the rotor. And that you know, looks pretty good. We'll uh, go ahead and tighten this up and see what we get. All right, I'm going to tighten this up and test fit, and we'll be right back. Okay, so uh, it's been a little bit. Uh, I discovered something interesting um, that didn't come up before. The When I put the two shims in, uh, I noticed that the outside pad was very tight, and the inside pad was very loose. So uh, there was another, there's another video where people put this on a, a 2003 uh, C5 Z06 Corvette as well and what they did is they add another shim and I noticed that when he added the other shim that this one uh, the outside pad became loose again and the inside pad was tight for him and I had the exact same results as, as he did um, and being a little bit of OCD that, that was good enough for those guys this was not good enough for me um, so I started investigating why you know uh, the shim two shims would make uh, this pad tight and three shims would make this pad tight. It seems like we needed a shim that was in between. So having a look at the calipers, um, I noticed that the pistons on one side, on the outside side, were out just a hair. And they were out farther than these. It was out farther than the inside pistons on this side. 
Uh, so I was like, oh, well, that's got to be the problem. Uh, so I just lifted out this little tag where the uh, uh, new inlet's going to be in. Um, and let the air out of the system, push those pistons in, went back to two shims, and now it fits perfectly. Very little rubbing, if at all. There's zero. Look at that. Just nothing. Just very tiny uh, uh, rubbing there. It's uh, a perfect fit. So I uh, ended up sticking with the two shims, fixed the piston uh, issue that was, that was causing a little bit of rubbing there, which probably would have went away anyway. Uh, but I'm glad that I went with two shims instead of three. Um, and got this situated to where it actually is where it needs to be. Um, so what I did is uh, for the, the back here, I went ahead and torqued those to 77 foot-pounds, uh, putting the red Loctite on there. Uh, now it's time to uh, take a look at these brake pads and just make sure they're pretty flush with the, uh, with the edge of the rotor, and it looks like they are. Um, looks pretty good there. Uh, I actually tried out both sides of the... Uh, um, going to one shim and going to three shims and neither one of those looked as uh, as as flush as this one especially at the top so we're going to go ahead and go with that and uh, i'm going to go ahead and torque these down uh, get this nice and tightened up and torque it down uh, i believe the torque spec for that is 47 foot pounds let me check that real quick and it is yes it is 47 foot pounds uh, in the documentation so check that out 47 foot pounds right there um so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and uh get that tightened down and we'll be back and that's uh pretty close to the end except for we need to go ahead and get the old line uh, off the old caliper uh and put in our new stainless lines and we should be fairly good to go here uh then we'll do a wheel fitment test just make sure all that's good um and we'll go from there all right see you soon Okay, what we gotta do now is get uh, this uh, thread taped fitting into this hole right here with the 7 16 wrench. Uh, so uh, that's the kind of the start of getting the brake lines hooked up. Then what we'll do is we'll remove this clip, uh, detach the, uh, uh, the stock line here, and <coughs> add our new uh, stainless steel flex line to this um, and hook it back up uh, uh, right where we were talking about right back here. Just making sure it kind of follows the same path. It doesn't uh, tangle up in any of the suspension. Um, and uh, make sure we can turn the wheel from side to side at full lock and uh, we don't have any kind of binding or, uh, um, or bending. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get that in there with the 7 16 wrench and we'll be right back.
we've got the line hooked up. These new clips are a little difficult to get in, it looks like, but uh, <clears throat> we got there. Um, lines hooked up. Another mistake I made was not tightening this up enough. I didn't want to uh, damage the thread, so it was a little easy on it at first, but uh, once I got it connected, I noticed this was a little loose. So I went ahead and gave it one more turn where it was uh, sticking straight up and then attached the, uh, the brake light there. Uh, so what I'll do now is just do kind of a fit test to move the wheel.